right, this is actually for the students of my VIEW course, but I thought I'd make this video public um, to, for anybody who's interested really. Um, I'm going to talk basically about VIEW Extreme 2014. This came out yesterday, or at least for me it did, um, alongside of VIEW Infinite. Uh, the rest of their lineup hasn't been released yet, but supposedly will be shortly including a PLE version. Um, there's also been a couple of other changes to the whole way that the academic licenses work, which is great because it means that if the students are using the PLE, when they um, come into, into university or if they send me their files for marking, um, I can open up their files and see um, everything inside it, which is awesome. So if you're in the educational sector, life just became a lot easier. So first of all, let's have a little look at some of the new settings in here. Um, first up, you notice it pretty much looks the same. It doesn't look really any different um, at, at you know, first glance. However, as soon as we start pulling things open, like the atmosphere editor, you notice already we're seeing a couple of changes. The first one under here is under the sun, is that we've got um, a real position of the sun, which is awesome. It means that you just go real world, go to the location, click wherever you are in the world, um, or you can even go to a list. So I'm in Auckland, New Zealand. Um, here we go. And hit OK, and boom, we're in the right place in the world. We can set up the day and time. Um, notice you have to say whether or not it's daylight savings, it doesn't do it automatically. Um, and we can still go back to our custom as well if we want to do it that way. Um, other than that, I don't think I've really noticed any differences. Um, it has only been 24 hours since I um, downloaded this and I've only played with it for a little short time. Um, but yeah, other than the, the sliders look a little bit different. And up here we have a new thing called Photospectral Model. Actually, I think they've got rid of a few of the old ones. Oh no, they've still got standard. Is there anything missing? Don't think so. Photos, um, photos, um, photometric Spectral. Now, again, doesn't look like there's any really major differences. However, um, if we go OK, um, actually no, first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to load up a scene. So if we go and open, you'll notice that it's got photometric scenes now that come um, on the extras DVD. Well, DVD, it's a downloadable disk image, but anyway. Um, and so there's two files in here that um, are kind of showing off the photometric renderer. Um, so there's this Desert Hero, so if we open up that. Uh, so we were just loading up, yes I do want to do that, um, a file from, um, just so we have the example files. And I've actually already baked one of these earlier. And this is what it came out like, I think. And let me just have a look at the settings because I might have had a play with this. No, that's not what it came out like. It came out like that. With probably a little bit of extra exposure. Something like that anyway. Okay, and you can see really natural looking colours. You can see a lot of the highlights are quite blown out, but we can still see stuff in the shadows as well. And also the interaction with um, the plants is a lot better. Um, now this is, I also did it as a normal spectral render. Okay, and so that's the old rendering engine, or the new, the old sunlight engine. I don't know how you want to talk about it. But you can see it's quite different. Okay, and especially the highlights you see on the on the on the rock, how it's almost it's kind of almost like it's blowing out a little bit. It's kind of bleeding in, and the plants as well. See these plants kind of look a little bit artificial, like they don't really belong there, and they don't really bleed in. Whereas these just look awesome. Um, there seems to be a lot more shadow underneath them, and they seem to interact a lot more with the terrain. Oops. Um, and obviously the colour is very different. Okay, so very, very warm. Now, yes, I could sit here and play around with it and try and you know get it right if I played around with the post processing. But I'll never get it anywhere near what it looks like there. Yeah, it's going to be terrible actually. Um, now the other thing we've got in here as well, which I just kind of had a look at, is we've got this whole way of um, well they call it tone mapping basically because of course this is rendering I don't know 32 bit um, you know high dynamic range and so usually what would happen if we have a look in here is that would get something I assume that this one here is the one that we're used to 
and so we would go something like that you know hit preview form and that's what it looks like and you can see it's really washed out in the shadows you know and you can kind of like bring this up a bit but it never really looks the same um, we're still getting you can still see that that new lighting uh, model and how it's still getting this kind of blown out and the yeah the, the plants still look really good however it's kind of tricky to get it looking as good there's also this photographic exposure filter this one's a little bit odd it's a little bit almost too realistic I suppose you could say because you could imagine if we did take a photo of this scene we've got these really bright areas of sky in here and then this whole foreground is in shadow so yes we would be struggling and if you play around with this you can kind of get it to work but um, I, don't think I can't get the shadows to kind of go in the other way it always seems to want to crush the blacks so we can kind of play around with that a little bit and try and get it back. Maybe if we go overexpose it, see if we can pull the highlights back. You never really get there. See, it always tends to have quite a lot of contrast in there. Um, there's also a linear exposure. This is quite nice. Okay, um, and we've got this kind of thing that we can map the entire range, which kind of looks a little bit like a log file, really. Um, we can probably go above this, I imagine. So that's kind of cool. Let's just drop that down. So, lots of different ways of playing around with this, which is nice. Um, now, there's these two here. These, this first one, I haven't really had a heck of a lot of success with. The Reinhardt Exposure Filter. And again, you know, looking kind of cool. Looks a little bit more, looks really weird. It's kind of in the background. But, um, yeah, I'm not sure what the contrast enhancement yeah not too bad but this one here Reinhard 2 now this one is really nice so that's the one that actually that's on def by default for this scene also this preview doesn't seem to do a very good job yeah beautiful it looks really well real which I quite like. But yeah, I have found that this preview doesn't seem to really line up that well. So it looks like there's more contrast in here than there is in here. I suppose it's just the resolution, really. So yeah, it does help if you kind of play around with it. Yeah, some really, really cool effects happen in here. I really like it. Yeah. it's a very nice lighting model oh and then there's the false color which is just weird um, it's really just for analysis I suppose you can kind of see the full range of colors happening in here um, which is kind of handy because you can see if I go um, too big you get the red so I can kind of drop that all the way down until there's no red in there if I go too far down you'll start to see everything turn blue you know so you can kind of sit there and balance it out so that you kind of somewhere in between yeah, so plus 0.5. Um, and you get like a full range of colors in there. But again, it's really just for analysis. I suppose you can get used to it. You'd know what kind of the range is. Um, there's also, if I just go back to, let's say this one here. We've also got um, sort of an exposure settings done by shutter speed aperture film as well. So if you're trying to match a camera, which I haven't tried out yet. Um, so if it was a 160... Um, f stop 22 on ISO 50 hit OK you see it's plus one hit preview boom and that's what it would look like um, I've generally found if you go 0 0.5 1 something like that 
0.75, drop it down a little bit. Yeah. Cool, I suppose it is sunset, so maybe, maybe I've actually got um, 400 ISO on there. Boom. Actually, sorry, sunset, I'm thinking the wrong way around. Oh, see, I adjusted my shutter speed, that's why. 160th, F8, 400. Okay. No, see, so yeah, about the same. See, it's really weird. See how it changes? I don't know if, the, I, I suspect that's a bug. Yeah. There you go, 130th of a second. Aperture, F8. Yeah, cool, hit OK. There we go. Hit preview. Chin, chin, chin. And there it is. So yeah, nice. You know, I think I've talked about that long enough. Um, it does work as well, of course, on the old engine. Now, your big question is, actually, let's make this full screen. Render times. So here's um, using the new model. It took my Mac Pro with its dual quad core, I can't remember what, is it 2.2 or what, something like that. Um, took it 11 and a half minutes. Um, and the uh, using the old spectral model, it took almost eight minutes. So yeah, a little bit slower, but you can really see the difference. And yeah, I find the biggest difference is that way that those plants um, are sort of interacting with their environment. It just looks so much better. And yeah, the highlights, shadows, looks awesome. Very happy to be able to use that. Might have to turn it through a few times. All right, let's just go and create a new document. Cool. Um, and talk about a couple of the other features. Now, also actually to do with lighting is, if I just create a light here, you'll notice that um, all of the lights now have two colors. What's that all about? The first one is the actual color, color of the filament, okay, or they call it the photometric color. And then we've got the filter color. So if you had a tungsten light with you know a daylight filter on it, you could simulate that. Um, if we just bring up the light settings here, you can see here it's got the photometric, so this is pure white. Um, but we've got all sorts of things. So here's our tungsten. And so then I can go, okay, and cool, and I want to put my daylight filter on my tungsten. Yeah, so I could try and match this with something that was kind of realistic. Yeah, and there's my Oh no, hang on, I better also just make sure I'm using our new photometric spectral. Cool. And we'll render this final to screen at that size, hit render. Alright, and so there it is. It doesn't look very daylight though, does it? Probably have to make it a bit darker. But you get the general idea. Now, also in there, is this IES profile and what this allows us to do is it's kind of shaping the light especially the full intensity and um, and fall off I guess I assume that's what it means as I said it's only been out for 24 hours so I haven't quite figured this out um, but it's really nice you get these really cool looking um, shapes to your light so let's render that I'll render, it, render it big Yeah, might have to make it a bit bigger just to kind of... Um, ah yes, that's right, 130,000 lumens. Notice as well, if we go into our options, okay, so I've already played around with this, um, under our units, normally it'd be on view units, which I think is just distance actually. Um, so in this case, meters. Um, but we've also got lumens and candles. So we can go to lumens and hit OK and we can actually dial in the numbers that we want. Um, let's just take our sun out of the equation. And drop it, pitch to minus 90, there we go. So, and here's our light. So now if we render, I have to increase my exposure. And look at that, isn't that a beautiful light source? Yeah, so we get these really nice, realistic looking lights. You know, if we switch that off, 
And hit render. Yeah, typical. Mm. Um, has it had much effect on rendering time? I don't think so. Two seconds versus three seconds. Okay. <laughs> um, not exactly scientific. I don't know if it is faster or not. But anyway. So yeah, so that's a really nice touch. And it works for spotlights and quadratics and lights that are carrying on as well. Um, not that there's actually any difference with these lights. They're actually all the same thing. Just with different settings. So you can load in again the profile. And get some really cool light shapes happening. Or not. I think that's affected the throw of my light. Um, there's no effect, uh, by the way, as well. If you go and enable relighting, it's still the same as what it's always been. So there's no no changes in here. Um, but of course, I could go five. And obviously, that's not exactly the best looking thing that's ever happened to it. All right. Um, I talked about location, didn't I? Um, there's a few other little things in the interface. The um, the ecosystem painters, yeah, a little bit different, but not that significant. Um, there's a new default material, so if you go and create a new sphere or your ground plane or whatever, you'll notice that it's finally a different material. It's been the same, well, forever, I think. Now it's got this new thing called natural grain. Um, so normally it would be procedural colours, but you'll notice that if we change it to natural grain, we've got this kind of different interface, and we can kind of choose two different colours, and it works, you know, in here immediately. Um, we can also choose, you know, two colours like that. Um, or if we lock it, it'll be two, kind of a variation of the same colour. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Notice the default setting there is one kilometre, which, yeah. Um, so yeah, so it's all right. Um, you can play around with the contrast and you know, how much of one or the other there is. So yeah, I can see it being kind of quick and handy to use. This distortion does kind of yeah, but yeah, kind of handy. I mean, if you're trying to make some sort of, I don't know, maybe some sort of earthy sort of tones. Come on. Yeah, pretty quick and easy. Um, now, if you actually expand that and have a look in the... Oops, <laughs> it would help if I had a light, wouldn't it? Oh, actually, we might as well have a little look in here. There's also some photometric atmospheres, pretty basic. Noon, afternoon, late afternoon, and sunset. Yep. So yeah, and it's. Yeah, but it is, it is a nice uh, photo. But then I can't really see the difference to actually just setting that up yourself. Um, I, I suppose for um, people who are new to view, it'd be very nice and simple and quick. Um, however, if we have a look at this function, you'll actually see, um, in fact, if I expand this meter node out, you actually see it's a new one called, I think it's new, I don't remember Natural Color Blend 2 being in there. Um, but you see it's basically just another node. So, yeah, which is interesting because, yeah, normally we'd choose something like this. So really, it looks to be just like a noise... Um, um, and then being mapped to two colours. So, yeah, not that impressed. Alright. Um, nothing else has really changed in here that I've noticed. Um, I do believe there was meant to be something about reflections. Yeah, sensitivity to in that. You can kind of see that's quite nice. Um, Again, I used to do that anyway because you just do it with the variable reflectivity and you could have just done it with the angle of incidence 
here. Um, oops. Yeah. Angle of incidence. You know, and then filtered that and put it into your reflection, etc. Which would have had exactly the same effect if I turn that off. Oh, and then inverted it. Yeah, exactly the same thing. So, yeah, not that, again, not that impressed. But, um, yeah, um, translucency, I don't see anything different in there. And effects. Again, I'm probably wrong, and if I am, you can post it in the comments below. Um, okay, what else have we got in here? Um, oh, yes, that's right. Oh, there's a lot of stuff with um, FBX geometry import and export. Um, I haven't got anything that I can really show you um, with that, but um, basically, very cool for the camera. So, yes, yeah, so you could import um, a camera somehow. Where is it gone? Hmm. Smooth and really, really, really synchronized. There you go. Yeah, and then you could open the synchronized data and synchronize it with the camera. So you'll notice in here it's got FBX and NukeChan now as well. So that's pretty cool. Um, again, not a big deal because I used to just import them anyway. So I've never had a problem with that. Um, open the XR 2.0 multi-layer again very cool if you're using something like Nuke um, a redesigned function editor um, I actually would have noticed that I had switched mine off because um, if I just bring up my preferences if I switch that on you'll notice I don't have any fonts so small bug um, but it's the same as what the plant factory is, which is awesome because I really like the, the whole way that the plant factory works. We're also working left to right. Well, I prefer top to bottom, but left to right's all right. I suppose it's kind of logical. Um, and all these are really nicely laid out. It's, it's very clear. It's all nice, nicely named, and yeah, we can just drag and drop these things in. Come on! Oh, sorry, double click them. Yeah, and away you go. So that's kind of cool. Um, but yeah, maybe I've turned the font off that it uses. So I have a ridiculous amount of fonts, and so I usually have to manage them. Otherwise, my apps take too long to start up. Um, what else we got in there? Nothing else has changed, I don't think. Um, oh, the perspective camera. Now, it says that this is switched on by default, but it's not. Well, it's not really. See, um, what's meant to happen is that you can move the camera around and it has a whole bunch of controls in here but it doesn't seem to do it however if you go into display options it's got this little option down here it says secure um, active camera as soon as you do that and then you move boom see these little icons changed okay and you'll notice that our camera isn't moving anymore okay I don't know why my backgrounds disappeared but yeah which is quite convenient and then you've got the option to copy the current view to the active camera so if you click that um, it should have moved our camera which it has I also get undo can I? No. Um, I can just double click of course on oops on the main camera and bring that back but yeah quite convenient um, and then we've also got this toggle active camera view and so if you switch click that then you'll notice that um, we should no it's still preserving it there you just click it again and you go back although yeah it looks like there's an uh, see and then it's disappeared again so there's still a few little bugs oh on the upside no um, my um, 3d mouse now works beautifully again it's been quite a few versions um, in the past it's kind of worked, but it's kind of gone dig, 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 all the time. Um, but it's working really well. So I'm stoked about that. It's a little bit fast, but I just need to get into the settings for my 3D mouse and I can 
operated again. So that's nice. I can all do it without having to use the mouse and I can move my camera around and still click on things. So yeah, thank you very much. Um, it's worked on the PC version fine all these years, but yeah, on the Mac it's been sort of coming and going since about 7 or 8 I think. Um, oh, ecosystem clumping. I did have a little play around with this, that's pretty cool. Um, so if you go and create, actually I made a complete mess of this scene, so. Um, kind of cool. Oh, I didn't really mean to do it on a sphere. It's just doing a little playing because I can't be bothered rendering anything massive. And we create an ecosystem. Again, I don't think anything too much has changed in here. However, once we load in our you know, couple of ecosystems, turn, turn, turn. Maybe some. What have we got in here? Yeah. Turn, turn, turn. Still would love it if we could just select five or six different things and then import them in one go. You know, if you just go hold down the shift key or something, that would be nice. Are you listening, Eon? So just go one, two, three, that, 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 and that, that. Choose the whole bunch of them, hit OK, go off, have a cup of coffee while they all import one day. I hope I didn't just choose the same thing, did I? No. Okay, and so now you can kind of go through and sweet. Okay, I only want ten percent rocks. Yeah, um, fifty percent of that, and whatever's left for the other one. And under here, we've got a new little thing called clumping. And we can say how much and how big these clumps are, which in this case is going to be pretty small because it isn't that massive. Hit populate. Oh, maybe we make it a little bit denser. Populate. Hit OK, and if we just kind of revolve our camera around here a bit. We can see. I oh, see that's working again. Oh my, I did switch that option on, didn't I? Cool. So you can kind of see it's clumping a little bit there. These rocks are clumping, and then we've got these kind of, you know, patches in between. Obviously, I need to render it at a much better quality. But you get the general idea. Um, small item ecosystems looked really interesting. I haven't played around with that yet, so I can't really show you. Um, Plant factory integration, which you'd expect. Is there anything else? I don't think so. Um, point position layer. I'm not even sure what that is. Point position on XY extensive list of channels that view can be entered for adding compositing flexibility. So it's got something to do with the ring. I have to have a play around with that. But anyway, um, I think that's enough for now. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed that. Um, but yeah, it's looking pretty cool. Um, one thing I would love to see in the future, if, again, if Eon's listening, is a better um, you know, object and material browser. Um, I find it so annoying, especially when you know I've got quite a few different collections, and I'm kind of reluctant to buy more because it just gets so difficult finding stuff. What I would love is a search box and keyword, you know, orientated instead of rather than this kind of archaic folder structure. Um, yeah, I don't know. Actually, is there any? I don't know if there's any new objects in here or not. But yeah. But anyway, we'll leave it at that. Till next time. This is Zane. Check out my blog. Till later. See ya.